Hey, the Grand Alive. This is Coffee with Will, brought to you by Northwest Furniture and Mattress, Grand Ron Hospital, AnythingToDigital.com, EONI, and our big longtime sponsor, Seabright Dentistry. And I'm here today with John Lackey, who is a ex city council member, a longtime resident of La Grande, and as I have recently learned, a 50 year car fiend, fanatic, whatever you want to call it. He has been into cars for a very long time since his kid was this big, as he was just telling me. So thank you. Today we're going to talk a little bit about cars and him and the upcoming car show that's coming up this weekend. So thank you so much for joining me here today, John. Good morning. So tell me a little bit about, so you're, you're I, when, you, when Arlen told me you were into cars, you, that made sense on one hand, but at the same time it didn't make sense because I, all I've ever known you for, and I think what most people know you for, is your city council membership, your ownership of Source One Consulting. You're sort of a business person here in town. Um, how do cars fit into that? What, is, is it a passion for you? Is it kind of like a long time? Like, why do you enjoy futzing with vehicles? I think it's a balance. Hmm. Dealing with people and business is one side of the of the coin, and the other is just things that you enjoy doing. Mm. Uh, it's, it's more creative because you've got something physical that you can look at to, mm. to really enjoy and you can put a bolt on a nut and you're making progress. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's hard to know when you're making progress. Absolutely, so absolutely. So it, it keeps me in balance, I think. So it's almost a creative outlet for you. Oh, you know, he, there's two loves for young men in life. One is girls and the other is cars. <laughs> and cars you can do something about. You know, you can take old rusty cars and make something out of them. I've not even tried to uh, pursue the other side of it. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Well, and so that kind of brings me to an interesting question that I've kind of been pondering over the last, you know, couple days. I was, at this weekend, I was out at a wedding and he, the grandpa who was helping out with the wedding was also a car fanatic, you know, but, you know, I am not a car person. I know nothing about cars. Like if I, if I, this weekend we broke down coming up Cabbage Hill and I had to ask somebody in the car which one was the place where the coolant goes in <laughs> because I know nothing about it, you know? And I think a lot more young people are like that. I think a lot more young people are kind of distanced from the love of cars that you're talking about. We find our creative outlet through media and technology and those kinds of things. We don't know cars and we don't futz with cars quite as much. I know that that's certainly not, not true for everyone. So if you're out there and you're a car fanatic and you're like, well, Will, you just don't know me. You know, that's, I, I understand you exist, but I think that the rule is more, you know, we're not like that. Well, so, it's a social thing. It's an opportunity to gather with other people that have common interests. Uh, one of the things that I really enjoy is the the quality of work of older craftsmen, mm. and we're losing that element in the in the uh, car restoration hobby. Uh, the other problem that we're having these days is everything's become so expensive. Uh, you can buy a car that's finished and ready to go, and and uh, uh, pay an exorbitant price for it, but. Uh, there's a lot of joy in creating the car mm. and, and buying pieces and putting it together and now you have something at the end of the day. Mm. So it, it's kind of a fun thing, but it's, it's, a, it's a balance thing, it's a social thing, it's a creative thing. Uh, it just satisfies an awful lot of things. Mm. Uh, opportunity to get together with other people and, and uh, see their, their creativity and how they go about things. If you look at the history of, of cars in the Midwest in the 20s, there were 20, 30, 40, 50 people manufacturing cars all doing the same thing in a different way because they didn't even know the guy down the road was even doing the same thing. Hmm. So it's interesting that there's an awful lot of ways to configure it. Uh, there were a lot of manufacturers of different components and some of them were assembled uh, in the manufacture, and some of them were forged and created. Hmm. The car industry came out of bicycle, the huh. bicycle industry, and then the idea to have a motorized bicycle, mm -hmm. and then eventually, you know, what we have today. But our technological advancement in today's cars uh, is way beyond my 
capability. Well, and it's expensive. Oh my yeah. goodness. Like yeah. I, we had a fender bender. I had a fender bender about a year ago and I bumped this thing at like three miles an hour and it was a two grand replacement for one oh, of these yeah. like new, <laughs> one of these new bumpers, you know, it's expensive. Well, the reality of keeping a shop together and all the requirements of yeah. running and the EPA and, and all of the mechanical liability, there's, there's so much goes into it. It's expensive to run a shop and yeah. it's expensive to pay the price. Yeah. But we're lucky in this community that we have some really good shops. We have some very talented people. Uh, it, it's fun. Uh, you go in with something that's all rusty and you come out shiny. Hmm. So, you know, there's great gratification and, and pride of ownership in, in that process. Absolutely, absolutely. So that being said, we have a car show coming up this weekend and you're involved in it. Um, what are your cars going to be that are so this weekend for crazy days concurrent with crazy days They're hosting a car show on Adams Avenue um, And uh, John maybe you can tell us a little bit about sort of the history of that and like what what is the car show? What is it for and you know, how, how are you involved in it? The history of it is that it's been around I think about 10 years I've only been involved about that time and I sure. don't think it was started too much before that but uh, it was an event that uh, was logical to coordinate with Crazy Days. Uh, it's a great economic thing for the community to bring cars in. There's probably 163 entries. Huh. Uh, last year at this time we had about 59 entries. Now we've already got 72. And these are people from all over the county, all over Eastern Oregon? I mean, do we Eastern have United States. Oh, wow. We okay. have people in from Idaho, Washington. California, I think we had one last year from Montana. So it's, it's a Western US or regional thing that brings in a lot of people to our community. Sure. And uh, it starts on Friday night. You can register your car on Friday night and there's a barbecue at the park. And then Saturday there's a poker run and judging and, and uh, Oh, just uh, there's uh, dinner Saturday night. There's uh, awards awards presentation. Sure. And uh, poker run and games and judging and just all kinds of things going on, all to bring people into our downtown area and to help support our businesses. Local businesses, yeah. So it's a win-win for everybody. Sure. And and, uh, and it's just fun because you see the talent of various people and. There are people who uh, build their cars and there are people who buy their cars. Mm -hmm. uh, but the pride and the fun and the enjoyment of being together and sharing is, is uh, a great community event. There's an interesting word that you used is pride. There's a lot of pride. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's, a, it's more of a value thing. Like there's a value to like when people, especially, you know, of, of your generation, look and say that I've created this car. I created mm -hmm. this thing or I, I own this thing. You know, talk, maybe do you feel that when you work with your cars? Oh, yeah, sure. And, and it isn't just our generation. Uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's become a somewhat expensive hobby. Yeah. Uh, when you start buying a car piece by piece and assembling it, it can be very expensive. And if you're in it for for a profit, you might as well forget that <laughs> from the get go. Because, I feel like most pa passion projects are that way. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you, you just can't buy a big enough truck to uh, uh, to offset the loss that you're going to take sure. from taking and building one piece by piece. But a lot of guys. Um, they want to keep their cars. They're yeah. it's something they've created. It's part of them. It's part of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great, great ownership. And we tour with them and we show them and we talk about them. And you know, we've got a very active car club, but we've got 60 plus members, uh, many of whom are active. We've enjoyed our Friday night meetings at, in the, uh, from May to October in, at the uh, Texaco station where we get together each week for a, a dinner and just enjoy each other's company. Sure. So it's a social thing, it's a car thing, it's... It's, it's an art thing. Of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. It's not my bag, but... No, I mean, it's very, a, I absolutely think it's an art. I mean, art for me, is it's a, it's a self-expression. It's, it's a, a very creative It's, a, it's taking yourself and manifesting it in something outside of yourself and yeah. creating something. And I think that that's, I mean, that fits all the categories, you know. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's creating something from yourself. So it, it seems like an art to me, even though people may not consider it an art. But I'm very concerned about the future of it because of the cost. Young families, you know, making a house payment and, sure. and buying groceries for kids and uh, shoes and all of the requirements of trying to provide for a household doesn't leave a whole lot of money for buying, for car buying cars. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're not a necessity, they're just a fun thing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So my last question for you will be this. If somebody were to want to get to know cars, like I, for me, I mean, I've had longings to be more connected to the thing that I'm driving around under mm -hmm. me, you know, um, maybe to sort of understand cars more, to maybe get into that world just a little bit without being super expensive. How would someone go about that? Are there any tips to just kind of getting into that world that aren't going to break the bank? It depends on how you want to approach it and what you're willing to invest in it. Sure. If you can buy a car in parts and assemble them and buy them rather inexpensively, uh, but by the time you sandblast them and prime them and paint them and bring the bodies up and redo the engines, it becomes very, very expensive. The other uh, you know, it's just uh, buying one ready to go and, and jumping into it. But you'll find that most of the guys are willing to help you with things and, and uh, we've got friends in the, in the hobby that uh, are knowledgeable about various aspects of it. So we have a lot of fun getting together and trading information and mm. helping each other. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a community thing. Hmm. So if somebody wanted, a young person wanted, they could maybe come and get be, become a part of the community, even Certainly. just in a little way, to try and learn. You don't have to be a, a owner of a car to be in the club. Hmm. And there are members in the club that have maybe excess cars hmm. or people that would help you with parts or restoration or technical advice. Sure. So, yeah, there's an opportunity for young people to get into it. I have... 16 Model T engines, and if I found the right person, I'd probably give them wow. parts that I have, but it would not be a complete car. So <laughs> it may take a few years to accumulate the parts uh, in that vein, and uh, eventually you'd build it and, and have fun with it, but and hope that you got it done before the kids grew up and that you're building it for to enjoy as a, as a family outing. That's what got us into it is is uh, when we were raising our family, we didn't have a lot of money. Hmm. So we found an old car and we'd go to the park on weekends and have picnics and hmm. and to the rivers and just drive it around for the fun of it. Hmm. So it can be a real fun family activity and bring, bring families together as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, John, for joining me here today. My pleasure. And uh, chatting with me about cars. And thank you, LaGrande Alive, for tuning in. Um, this has been Coffee with Will and John Lackey, um, brought to you by Northwest Furniture and Mattress, Grand Ron Hospital, anything to digital.com, EONI, and Seabright Dentistry. Um, be sure to check out the car show and crazy days downtown in La Grande, Oregon this weekend. Be sure to like and share this video and tune in to LaGrandeLive.tv for more local content. I'm Will Bowman.